So it is 6.04 on June 14th, and I'll call the Conway Grammar School School Committee meeting to order. First order of business is reorganization and the selecting of chairs. I open nomination for chair. Darius, are you recording? I just didn't see that button. No, you know what? It's recording on uh, YouTube. Oh. I missed all the ones last week, and they're just all on YouTube now. So now that we do it this way, I don't have to do it both ways. All righty. Well, I would be happy to um, be chairperson again, um, if that's good with everybody. Yeah. So moved. Uh, I nominate Elaine Campbell for chair. Second. Second. Any other nominations? Seeing none, nominations closed. All those in favor of Elaine Campbell being, Campbell being chair? Bill? Yes. 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 Michael? Yes. Elaine? Yes. 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 All right. I now hand the movie, the movie, this movie <laughs> over to <laughs> Dr. Campbell. First. Nice movie. All right. Can I have a right. nomination for vice chair? Uh, I nominate Michael. Oh. I'll second that. Um, I was going to hopefully see Denise here tonight and see if she wanted to try it out. Um, Elaine, do you know if Denise was interested in continuing as the collaborative rep? I know that it's a... She is. I asked her. She's happy it's to an continue extra. with that. Yep. Awesome. Okay. I will, um, I will continue as vice chair. I'm happy to do so. All right. So can I have a vote? Phil? Yes. Michael? Yes. And myself. So Michael will be vice chair. We need a secretary. I guess we're going to nominate Denise as a secretary. I'll nominate Denise as a secretary. Second. All right. All in favor. Michael? Yes. 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 Phil, yes, and myself. All right, Denise is a secretary. Member is Phil, and we have an open member. Frontier rep. Phil, do you want to keep up with that? Sure. All um, right. One more year. All right, I will nominate Phil as the Frontier rep. Can I have a second? <laughs> I'll second that. All right. Uh, Michael, vote. Yes. Phil? Yes. And myself also. Um, do we vote for the Union 38 reps? You, you, you appoint at this point forward. You actually appoint the last one as well, but okay. it's fine you voted. Um, right. And I would recommend removing Phil as a Union 38 rep because he's on Frontier and Frontier gets a vote already. So you're actually, when Phil is in both places, you actually lose a vote. All right. So we'll put Denise in Phil's place. Sense? Does that make sense, Phil? What I'm saying? Yeah. And Denise did agree to be the collaborative representative again. Is that the same with the negotiations team? Negotiation, you just you just assigned whoever you want. So and it is a negotiation year, just why. So it's gonna be busy again, second half of the year. So I'm happy to keep doing it. And who else wants to do it with me? Mm. It, it is a big time commitment. So Phil has the ability to come in in well, it wouldn't be for Frontier. So you'd be able to be able to come in as a select board person. I don't know who's on the select board and you want to do it that way. That way you have two people. But for it's a single position though. Each person gets a school committee member and a town member. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do we'll do it. I'll do it as the select board member. Michael, you have any interest? I I can't, sorry. Okay. Well, we'll have an open spot for either our new member or talk Denise into it. Okay. Well, no, if you're doing, if you're going to do it, Elaine, then that's, that's the spot. And I would yeah. be, you know. Oh, I'm, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was two school committee members and select board. Okay. No. All right. So no. Phil and I are on again for that gig. Okay, so uh, re review and approve minutes from May 18th, uh, 2021. Any comments, suggestions? If not, can I have a motion to approve? Sure. Second? 
I'll second it. All in for, well, actually, Phil, I'm sick of this part. Phil? Yes. Michael? Yes. And myself, so that's unanimous. <laughs> um, financial statements, Shelly. Okay, I sent out uh, reports for you to look at today. Uh, there were 10 warrants that you signed electronically totaling $56,762.31. Um, and then I did share the expense reports which were through May 31st. Uh, so as I said in my report, uh, the unspent amount as of May 31st was higher than it typically would be. Um, if you look at the last page of that report, it's not giving you a true picture because it says there's 425,000 available, but that doesn't account the last five payrolls that get us through the beginning of June through the end of summer. So that's not really a true picture at this point. Um, I want to say our, our available balance um, after those payrolls was somewhere between 140 and 160, which is higher than it would normally be. Uh, at this time of year, but given all of the um, conservative approach to purchasing that we took and then the COVID money uh, that we received, whether that was federally funded or from the town, that helped us get some things that we may have otherwise purchased from budget. Um, you know, things we needed in addition to budget, but it also meant that if we were now buying um, all of these extra wipes and things, we used down that COVID money before we hit the general fund. Um, and then so we've also we get the carpet we cut out. <laughs> You're going to be so excited to hear what else we're getting. I said oh, Elaine cool. is going to be so excited to hear that. Okay, all right. We're going to be getting some air starting. We're going getting going with the air conditioning. Wow, okay. that's awesome. Yeah. So we had expenses that also would normally be spent down in a typical year, such as professional development, our substitute line and our transportation line. And we just didn't use those funds in the same way this year, given changes in the educational model. So that freed up money. Um, so we have encumbered some funds uh, to make some purchases that we wouldn't typically make in a normal school year. One of which is the four, uh, to start with, four AC units, mini splits for four classrooms to start. Um, so that is in the works, um, unless it's completely opposed here, because we're at this point, we've just put the POs in the system. Um, and then we've also done a decent order for curriculum, textbooks, library materials, and then nursing supplies. Um, so that was allowing us to replenish some things that we probably wouldn't buy a whole set of in a whole year. Um, so we feel really fortunate at this point for the financial position that we're in. Um, I still think we're, we're going to have some funds available for reclassifications into school choice. Uh, which I think is a good idea. I think we're overexpending our school choice compared to what we're bringing in, and it'll help us save um, for that rainy day fund a little bit further in the event that there's something that you know we haven't planned for. Um, so that's also our known as the school lunch fund. <laughs> <laughs> it can pay for some school lunch things. Um, so that's a recommendation that any remaining budget balance that we don't spend down in the next few weeks, uh, we move those funds over to school choice, um, any remaining balance. So that's that's where we're at currently. And if you don't have questions, I can do a revolving fund update as well, because that was included in the report. That's awesome and exciting about the uh, mini splits. That's great. Did you have to put those out to bid or? Um, I think we'll be able to do them through Jamrog. Uh, we'll probably get a couple of other quotes just to make sure, but Jamrog is on the state contract, so we don't technically have to put it out to bid anyway. Oh, great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Good. Um, so we're in good shape there, and I think uh, if you look through the report, Darius, do you want to share your screen for me? Do you mind? Let's give some, something a look at. <laughs> Um, so starting with school choice uh, on the report here, once he gets things going for us, you'll see that we started the year with 380,000. Uh, we had expected 231,000 in revenue, but we're actually bringing in almost 260,000, which is uh, due to special education increment claims. So that increased our revenue slightly. Um, our anticipated expenses are down here. Um, there was 30,000 that we put in this year for um, 
special education transportation, there's 11,000 on the general fund budget for transportation expense for special education. And Karen wasn't positive what we were gonna need to get through the year. And we do not need that 29,000. So that has come off. Um, and then I'm also anticipating that of the savings, we're gonna reclassify at least 45,000. So that gets us to the 207 for expenses. So we're looking at ending the year with 432,000, um, which is a really good spot to be going into for fiscal year 22. Um, yeah, it's we're in, a, we're in a good financial position right now. So starting off with 432,000, our revenue expected based on cherry sheets right now to be a little bit lower. Of course, that could always get adjusted, but 243 coming in, 293 going out, which is why I'm saying I think it's good that we're putting some money back into choice because our expenses are projected right now to exceed our revenue, um, but still ending the year with more than one year of reserves at 383,000 is the current uh, projection for next year for school choice. That's awesome. Yeah. So looking at school lunch, you know, this is an account that we've talked about. I know you've talked about it before me too. It's one that always sort of borderlined on deficit. Um, so we started the year with about 6,000 balance. Uh, year to date, we're bringing in roughly 70,000 in revenue, which I think is fantastic considering we had no idea where we were going to be a year ago. Um, having students in the building most of April and all of May really increased our reimbursements. And it turns out the reimbursement rate is higher than what it would have been if we were charging cash um, for anyone who was not free or reduced lunch. So we're actually making out at this point with students fully back in the building. Um, our supply costs are lower because we had a gap in the number of kids in school at the beginning of the year. Um, and then our payroll is also uh, accounted for in here. We're looking at about 33,000 in payroll, which is, less than what we had planned on um, because we are probably going to have to reclassify and i took that out already about eight or nine thousand just to make sure that at the end of the year we're not completely depleting our funds um, i get an email every other month from the town accountant saying school lunch is in a deficit and i keep reassuring him that we're going to bring that account positive so we're looking at this year with about a $5,000 positive net income, which gives us 11,000 going into next year. I think it's a good spot considering everything that we've gone through this year with COVID and knowing historically where school lunch has been. Um, so start of the year, 11,000, I'm projecting about 80,000 in revenue and that's primarily based on May sales. Lunch is free again for the entire year for all students, USDA extended that program. Um, so again, we'll be bringing in more, about 70 cents more than what we would be if we had cash students paying in the building. And then our expenses are only about 45,000, which gives us a significantly positive net income and then ending our year with about 46,000. Um, expenses are down because when we built the budget, we did not know what was gonna happen with school lunch next year and we got the ESSER grant. Um, so in order to cover wages, we have our food service director's salary being paid from general fund, but the remaining wages being paid from the ESSER grant. So that'll allow us to build up the account, which I think is a great spot for us to be in. Um, we hopefully can pay in fiscal year 23, fully fund all of our expenses from this account again, and be in better shape moving forward. And if we do continue to have a higher surplus, we can talk about what kitchen equipment needs, upgrades and repairs, things like that, if our balance stays significantly higher. So um, I'm pleased with where we are given where we were last June and having no clue what this year was going to look like. That's the best school lunch report I've ever heard in my yeah. years of Conway School <laughs> Committee. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I guess, Sh Sh Shelly, before we look at, you know, additional school kitchen equipment, could we just take one more, uh, another look back at what the wages we're paying to? Because I, I just wanted to make sure that our cafeteria staff is at least getting $15 an hour or minimum wage or whatever. I know, I know minimum wage is not applicable, but it's definitely an issue. Um, I think that, that we need to just step up and pay people at least $15 an hour when, when we can. So yeah. I want to say that, that. Yeah, I'm pretty oh. sure everyone oh. is. Oh. I'm going to pull it up quickly because I don't want to give you wrong information, but I don't believe that any of our cafeteria staff district wide are paid under $15 an hour. 
Um, Darius and I actually have been looking at the salary schedules and Conway has not had a salary schedule for uh, cafeteria staff, but we're looking at what Frontier and Deerfield has as sort of a benchmark for us. And, um, you know, 1425 would be the minimum that we would start at if somebody came in brand new because that is going to be minimum wage in January. But I don't believe Conway has anyone at that rate right now. Um, the new hire, we have one brand new hire, so I'll have to take a look at her. She might have come in a little bit lower without much experience, but you know, Kristen and I can certainly make an adjustment for that. And then the, the cafeteria leader, um, Jeannie, is, is in a different category because she's running the show over there. So uh, we'll definitely take a closer look, Phil. Okay, that's great. Um, okay, what's left? Uh, do we have early childhood next? Yeah. So we started off with the early childhood program with a really good positive balance, almost 75,000, which is great because our revenue was very low. We're only looking at about 15, maybe 18,000 by the end of the year. Um, our expenses, however, we did continue to pay wages out of this fund because we knew that we had the 95,000 in reserves. So we have a negative net income, end of year balance, about 36,000. Going into next year, however, we are expecting class size to resume some normalcy. So there's 16 to 17 kids, I believe, currently. Um, I don't know if they're all fully contracted and enrolled or if there's just a few that are still in the works. Um, but we're looking at about 80,000 in revenue and our expenses to be um, only about 50,000. Again, we're using some ESSER funds to offset some of the expenses here because we didn't know what revenues were going to look like. So we're ending the year with almost 64,000, which again, same concept as school lunch, leaves us in a good spot going into fiscal year 23 that we can move some wages back over. You know, and I'm trying to be as conservative as I can on the revenue and as high as I can on the expenses so that, you know, hopefully our expenses are really truly close to stated, which they should be because they're labeled with exact people and columns and steps and the revenue, you know, I always try to go on the lower side so that if we have, you know, additional revenue, we're making out better versus having to go in the reverse. So again, I feel like we're in a good spot here considering we, again, didn't know where we were gonna be going into fiscal year 22. Um, and then I think we just have sped revolving to talk about. So the Special Education Revolving Fund at Conway, you know, you guys know, I don't have to say this, Wings has a great program. Kristen and her staff do a phenomenal job. Um, we started this year with about 225,000, brought in 300,000 for revenue, and our expenses going out were almost exactly a match of what we were bringing in. Uh, so we ended the year almost in the same position, just $1,300 shy with 225,000. So going into next year, that's our starting balance. Our revenue is lower. We have a student going out of the program that as far as I know at this point, we do not have a replacement for. So our revenue is coming down about 50,000. Um, however, our expenses aren't coming down at quite the same capacity. I have moved some things around. Um, some of them can be absorbed in general fund because of some savings that we've had due to retirement. So uh, we've been able to shift some things so that this account isn't getting completely eaten up in, in one year's time. But if you can look at the end of the year, you know, going from 225 this year to 182 next year, we are taking a significant chunk out of our reserves. So I caution us moving forward. And I think for fiscal year 23, especially if we don't fill that spot and if we have any other outgoing students, we are going to have to look at how we move funds around so that we're not bringing this account down to, you know, I, even 125,000 feels really uncomfortable. I think we should have that 150 plus balance. And it has been higher than that for several years, which has allowed us to do some things. I think last year we put a mini split in the Wayne's classroom. So, you know, we've been fortunate in that regard, but I just want us to be aware of this is probably the first time outside of school lunch that Conway's gonna have to start to look at with the revolving funds, doing some different things moving forward. So again, not a concern for next year, but when we build 23, there might be some recommendations to take a salary or wage off of the revolving fund and place it onto general fund or look at school choice and see where school choice is at. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention here as we're thinking ahead, because believe it or not, <laughs> fiscal year 23 planning starts in like six months. So, you know, it's already on my mind looking ahead. So shall we drop enrollment to 10 this year just because of 
the distancing and everything, but I know that there are two students currently in the um, that are going to be looked at this summer for the program. Yeah, Karen said that there could be some additions down the road, but at this point, what she knew concretely, the roster was the roster. So again, I try to go conservative. I don't want to make promises on revenue that we can't keep. But, you know, obviously, if we do bring in more kids, the oftentimes there's a one to one IA that goes along with that. So while revenue increases, expenses usually increase as well. So um, and the, the wages here do account for one IA no longer being in that program. So we've already taken that out. That's part of what's bringing our expenses down for next year. So it's a lot of info, I know. But overall, I think we're in a really good spot um, going into 22, better than I certainly thought that we were going to be. And I'm, I'm happy about where we're at right now. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty overall, very healthy report. So, yeah, awesome. All right. It's, it's true of the town in general, too. And when you just take a moment to reflect what the what, what the reality was for us a year ago and um, just the, the 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 scenarios and the forecasts of 10 percent revenue cuts from the state and this and that. And how many times you had to do the budget over again? Oh, this is really like the best case scenario. Yes. Um, absolutely so oh, we right. we're not asking for a new truck phil yeah right right although you know apparently no that, apparently that's never a problem <laughs> never been have. a problem never you will should be have, they pay everything. so no nope. at town meeting that's all they seem to care about with, with the darren truck <laughs> or road grader or yeah you name it you've got it um all righty i didn't recall any public comment yeah there was a bunch of them there's that one you have one my understanding you have uh, the lou, lou vincent's uh one she sent in uh, does somebody have it up that they can read it uh, um hold on I think I have to talk to uh, IT at the school because I can't seem to get on my iPad, so I can't is, multitask. Is this the um, professional development thing? Yeah, it's the one she sent to I, all school committees to be read. I got it. Does it need to be projected or just um, just read aloud? Read aloud would be great. Okay. Um, dear school committee members and administrators, I would like to thank you for all of your hard work and continuous commitment to our schools. I would also like to thank you for being receptive to exploring and undertaking personal and professional development in relation to anti-racism and equity. As you know, our schools have made a commitment to addressing long neglected aspects of our systems, and community in regard to equity and racism. Administrators, teachers, and parents are enthusiastically entering into self and community education and are developing a growing understanding of equity in the world and in our community. The Pathways Professional Development Plan put forth by fourth grade Deerfield Elementary School teacher Jennifer Smith presented to you at a recent school committee meeting offers a thorough and thoughtful avenue for committee members to grow, to gain knowledge of self and systems, and to become a more educated person in our community. This is ongoing work for us all. This PD, developed by Ms. Smith, has been embraced at the elementary schools with the support of elementary administration, curriculum director Kim McCarthy, advisor to the FRSU 38 Anti-Racism and Equity Task Force, Amanda Mosea, and the Collaborative for Educational Services. As I am sure you are all aware, it is vital for school committee members to be educated and up to date as to how best to serve our community. Many of you indicated at that school committee meeting that you would be interested in taking this PD. I applaud this intention. To follow up on Jennifer Smith's offer to you to take this professional development, I would like to offer my services and that of other Deerfield Inclusion Group volunteers, known as the DIG, 
to act as collaborators and to assist you in traversing the PD. Aspects of this PD will be done with small group participation and DIG would like to offer our presence and support to do this PD with you and offer any offer a type of buddy system as you work through it. Many DIG members have been actively working on issues of equity and anti-racism personally and professionally and provide a meaningful resource. DIG would be honored to partner with you in the work of equity and anti-racism professional and personal development, recognizing the ongoing need for learning and community. I have been engaged in anti-racism work for 16 years. I am a co-founder of DIG and a parent to children of color in our school district. I am a former intern with the Collaborative for Educational Services, a member of the Sunderland Human Rights Task Force, a member of the FRSU 38 Anti-Racism and Equity Task Force, sitting on the Policy and Procedures Committee, as well as a student at Mount Holyoke College working on a thesis on race, racism, and power. I understand that doing the work of unpacking our own bias and examining parts of ourselves and our country's history can be deeply challenging. I would like to offer my support and availability to you this summer as you undertake this PD. I am proposing that we organize two or three sessions over this summer where school committee members and DIG members can meet to review how the PD is going the process, questions, feelings, and just in general, as a way to connect while doing this hard work. If school committee members are interested in this suggestion, I will be happy to facilitate, facilitate a few days to make this happen. I look forward to connecting. Many thanks, Lou Vincent, Deerfield Inclusion Group. Thanks, Michael. Sure. Um, all righty. I guess we can talk amongst ourselves about or further that discussion about what people are want to commit to time or whatever, but can I skip, a can great I, offer. Can I skip straight to the final exam? I don't know. Well, okay. Um, I think it's a process. I mean, I've, I've, yeah, I mean, I've done things like summer book groups. This, this is different. Um, and uh, I'm I definitely would be interested in participating. Um, Ms. Dylan or Darius, is there more information about the structure and resources that they'll be using that we can like see on a website or a, or someone? So the Deerfield committed to possibly getting together. This is back and forth about availability. Nobody wants to say no to this work, but there's also the concern of getting together over the summer. They asked me to, me or someone was going to do a doodle pool poll rather to find out dates when people are available. However, there, I don't know how you set up a range of a poll for the entire summer. Um, meanwhile, Frontier heard the same statement and um, Jennifer Smith went to them directly and asked them directly what they were doing for work and such. Um, they are reading a book, they're doing a book read. Um, um, so you wanna talk about race is the name of the book. And so they're committing to read that book and then they're gonna talk about it. They, they kind of felt like getting together this summer was not realistic and that they're gonna do a book read and then meet prior to their school committee meeting in September to have a book discussion and talk about, start with the book discussion where they want to go from there. So that's kind of where they went there, although some people were also interested in what the other group is doing. And so we're just gonna let people know what's going on, if a group's gonna to get together um, to talk about the, um, the teachers programming. The teachers, the, the PD the teachers went through that she talked about um, in meeting with some big members to talk about that. So. So it was really loosely put together, I think, because people were kind of, you're kind of, people were on the spot trying to decide, um, with not knowing when and where and that kind of stuff. So that's kind of where it's at right now with the two options. Two options that other two committees are doing. You can do your own thing. 
You know what I mean? I make it three yeah, options. I guess yeah. I feel like it's a nice yeah. invitation, and I don't feel at this moment that I have enough information to make any decision about it, other than, you know, I'd be happy to, you know, tag along at what other people are doing or, you know, um, you know, there's only three of us here tonight. We're down a member and a member's not here. So that's why I feel like it's, you know, I'm not making any decision yeah. for others at this moment, but certainly I'm happy to participate as and when we can. So you want me to push out? I definitely see value. Of, yes, that sounds great, Darius. Yeah, well, I see value in, um, in coordinating, you know, having a, a group from all of Union 38, you know, the, the, if we were all doing it together, um, that would be a nice opportunity to see other, you know, committee members from different towns, you know, other than the joint committee meeting. Um, so I'd be open to having it kind of be a, a wider Union 38. Um, and like there's a there's a book group I'm facilitating with Western Math Math Partnership. Um, and we, you know, we picked a day. We said it's going to be Wednesdays at three. And we have like, you know, just a set, you have five meetings to read this book. And, um, you know, we recognize that like not everybody can make that time. Um, but I, I felt like um, it kind of gave like a nice tangible thing that you could say, yes, I can make it or no, I'm sorry, that doesn't work for me. Or ask, you know, hey, uh, that doesn't work. But um, this other time would work for me if there's two groups, you know, that would be interested or something. Um, so I found having like just picking a like if it's the third Thursday at two or something like that, um, it gives somebody to gives everybody like something to see if they can make it work or not. It gives you like a tangible item to work with. So Elaine, you're muted. Um Keep us informed of how the other groups are progressing. I mean, we could even partner with somebody like Waitley, who is similar to us, and we can see if maybe we could do something together. But I feel like we need more info. But um, is somebody buying copies of that book and distributing? Or we, you know, that's some place to start, too. Or. Um. I think the people are just going out and getting it. We certainly okay. could. We certainly could purchase. The school can certainly, you know, there's four of you can certainly purchase four copies of it and get it out if you want. So that's what Frontier is doing now. They're doing. They're acting separate. Then Deerfield's not doing anything to do with that book. But if you're interested in a book read and going that read route, um, it's a little bit more. I think some are friendly. The problem is, that, you know, what they're asking. I think right now in the first weeks of June, We're administrators trying. have. Administrators have no capacity to organize anything yeah. right now. I got we have a ministry retreat this week, and then everybody's trying to get the heck out of town. Right, um, and so I know that's kind of how I feel. And so it's timing wise, and I think that's what Frontier was doing. Frontier was saying, "Listen, we want to do this work, but realistically, we want to do it together, and let's do it in September." And so I'm kind of reading the room right now. That's what I'm hearing. I hear, you know, there might be times it does pop up, but there's also, you know, it's not. If you make a commitment to what you want, doing it later, it's not saying kicking the, you know, thing down the trail. And it's also, there's different speeds. Committees run at different speeds. I hear Michael bringing other people together. I don't know what the process looks like. You know what I mean? I don't know, you know, what book you're reading and that kind of stuff. Is it controversial? Is it internally controversial? Need some level of trust. They're also going to be in-person meetings next year. So not as easy as jumping on. Well, I guess you could do trainings online, I guess. You could do this this way online. Um, All right, anyway. that's, that's good. So we'll we'll see where we go with this, but we appreciate the invite and we'll, you know, you'll keep us informed, Darius. Okay. All right, we're on to unfinished business. COVID-19 update. No real update other than summer programs are going to be moving forward with the same rules we ended school with. Yeah. Um, they're still, they went back and forth. This went back and forth whether ad vaccinated adults had to wear masks or not. They're getting some pressure from the other side. I think that might change as summer goes on. Um, 
as people have to become more accustomed to taking masks off after we spend a year trying to get them to put them on. Right. So that's All it right. there. And do okay. we have an anti-racism update tonight? No update. Other, other, they just asked me to do, do the quick 30-second one. of um, They did have a full group meeting um, to kind of talk about the year's goals and next year's goals. And next year's goals are really going to be based around communication is and keeping the momentum going. And so um, obviously you saw the goals of the district set up at the joint meeting. So we, you know, we have things plotted up, keep things going. But as, the, as their group um, connected to the, you know, the school, um, making sure they keep themselves going there as well in their work with students. So they got a lot of great ideas about um, peer work, student peer work, and then older students working with younger students. So we'll hear more about that in September. Awesome. All right, so now we need a vote on early release and Friday guest care fee. You were, there was ongoing discussion, we tabled it, and now you want us to vote, Darius? Is that any updates on yep. it? Before? Um, the only update is that the, I forget where you guys were in the lineup if you were last and you already know this, but the things that we changed was that um, there would be no fee to a family that's enrolled in the after school program. That came out of Waitley. I think I may have already told you guys about that, um, but that was an updated thing. So if you already are getting after school care, we're not trying to add more of a bill on. It's just um, so instead of your pay, your your enrollment for the Friday after school care pays for that hour and a half spot, and then multiple children will be um, two fifty per additional child. So that was the. I can go through the whole thing again, but if you need me to, but no, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, and the only other update is the other three towns, while kind of surprised me, all have passed it because mm -hmm. there was a lot of in, in, initial debate. Um, I didn't, I wasn't sure it was going to pass in any town, but they did all pass it. So just so you know where we were at. No, no pressure, but it lets you know. Yeah. <laughs> you can do your own thing. You, it really is your own after school program yeah. and you can have your own rules there. Yeah. So, so Michael and Phil, are you? ready to vote or you have discussion about this i've kind of moved i'm like now i'm like you know i think it's reasonable for enough enough of a headway to expect people to pay five dollars for it as they do it so but i was kind of against it before but yeah i don't right. i don't want i don't want shelly to be mad at me when the books don't balance so <laughs> and I, I feel that that the reasons for doing it were made sense. You know, it's it's a fee that's manageable, and we have systems in place if if um, you know, like the extra child reduced rate, and the uh, if students are already in the after school program, there's no additional charge. Things like that. I, I, it makes yeah, sense I to me. The um, other thing was the historic thing, which you know, times change, things change, you know. So the only thing that I'll say is that I, I really I'll make not, I, I would not want to sue parents that are unable to pay their balance. So I hope I hope that that doesn't come to that. But um, that's an unhappy memory from years Thanks. past. Prior yeah. super right. All right, so Michael's made a motion that we uh, pass or are in favor of the early release fee. Uh, can I have a second? Sure. All right, uh, Michael, yes? Yes. Phil? Yes. And I am in favor also, so that is passed. And now we need a playground project update. Kristen? We we uh, settled on a uh, the our contractor. Shell, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So the bids went out uh, in early April for the contractor, and we had five bids come in for the town to consider. Um, the school and the Berkshire Design made a recommendation to go with a company called Mass West out of Granby. Um, Berkshire Design has worked with them previously. Uh, with the alternate, they were the lowest bid at 146,000. 
Um, so the contract is actually effective today. They could technically start work today through September 17th. Uh, we have a site meeting planned for tomorrow to talk about you know, any immediate issues that have come up. Um, equipment has been ordered, the surfacing has been ordered. Uh, some of that's actually, I think, being delivered this week and next week. And the contract is slightly lower than what uh, the initial cost estimate was. And we're hoping with contingencies to bring it down even further because there's like 30,000 in contingency built in, but we're moving ahead. We, got a, we had some equipment delivered today. So that was exciting. Can't wait to see it. It's awesome. And the select board voted on this last Monday. Shelly came in and presented to the select board so that we're able to do that part of it as well. So I see we have to have our meeting in person in September or October. We have our meeting on the playground. There you go. That sounds great. Actually, with those big new swing sets, we could all do it in just two of those swing sets. <laughs> it's good for the brain. Yeah. All righty. On to updated face covering policy, Darius. So I sent out two policies. I just got kind of beat up by doing that. It made too much options for people. What I'm asking, the second policy, the really short one was what Amherst did, and they basically just said, let's just follow what the state says moving forward. And I wanted to bring that up to people, but in the first meeting, I received kind of a, you know, we have a, you know, it was kind of shot down really badly. And then moving forward, it was kind of shot down. So what I'm asking for, you can choose, you can do what you want for a policy, but it's just edit the current policy we have, and then we'll edit it again. But when, when the time comes, but right now it's edited so that students can be outside without masks um, and indoors with masks. And when they change that policy with the state, then I'll update the policy again and bring it back again. Um, but I, when Amherst did it, they did it like the week after, a, a day hour or two after I sent the agenda, I was like, oh, I like how they did it. They just kind of got rid of this back and forth, which is follow Jesse and the Department of Public Health. Um, but I understand that we've kind of, these are policies we took months developing with our communities and stuff. And so maybe we should write it through to the end. It's, it's basically what I was told. So what if you need to change it over the summer? Are you going to call us back in? No. I will make an executive order like I did last time, and you guys will retroactively do the policy. All right. Good. We may, depending on what the changes are come fall, it's a good question. What happens this fall is we'll figure out if we need to have a meeting in late August before school starts. And if it's going to be one of those things where we need things, a lot of things, we may have to do a joint meeting. We all get together and we just kind of power through some of the major changes for the opening of school. Um, if there are no major, major changes, then, you know, I'll, I'll let people know by email. And then if people object, you can call a meeting and then have it or people can let it ride to the first school committee meeting in, in September. All righty. So you need a vote on the, the change? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that outside no mask inside mask and the the revisions okay yeah yeah call it the may the may 2021 face cover may covering 2021. policy update okay sounds good can i get a motion for that may update so moved second all right all I'll second favor. It. phil yes michael yes and i vote in the positive also. All right, and now we need the revised non-union personnel handbook. Look at you, Darius, you're on it. Okay, so first I wanna say I recognize that you all just received this today. And because we are presenting a policy to you, you do not have to vote on it tonight. It does say vote on the agenda, but you do have the right to wait until September if you wanna read this and process it. I had hoped to get it out sooner, but we just weren't, I wasn't ready on Friday. Um, but the good news is for Union 38, um, all of the changes are positive. So the personnel handbooks are one of the things that I, I looked at when I first started in the district and Darius and I were kind of like, eh, put this on the parking lot. Neither of us could take it on um, in that first few months that I had started. So we finally had some free time quote unquote, and uh, we're able to dive into this. And one of the things that we saw were some significant disparities between what the frontier 
um, non-union personnel. So we're talking about custodians, secretaries, and cafeteria staff primarily. Um, so the non-union personnel at Frontier and the non-union personnel at Union in like positions, let's talk about uh, school secretaries, for example, they were receiving some benefits that were entirely different. Um, so Darius and I wanted to recognize those inequities and move forward with making some changes so that the positions are more in alignment. Um, so that's really where all of this came from. And most of the changes impact union in a positive light. Um, actually, all of the changes do. So the first step of this was looking at job classifications. The union handbook was a little bit more organized than Frontier. Frontier was broken down really specifically by job, like principal secretary, uh, superintendent secretary and you know it had different things for each of those and we looked at reclassifying based on the work year so 10 month there's also 10 month plus which includes a few people and i don't think conway has anyone like this but some of the schools do where there might be say a guidance secretary that works five extra days at the beginning of the year and five extra days at the end of the year or then we have our 12 month employees which is primarily custodial and secretaries that work year round um, so we streamlined the classification so that the handbook's easier to read and moved ahead with that. And I just want to say this replaces the previous union handbook, and now Frontier and Union would be on the same handbook moving forward should all of the committees pass this. Um, so we updated the hiring requirements. Both of the policies or both of the handbooks were missing some um, policies that we have to sign, such as sexual harassment. Uh, that has to be signed upon hire and then recertified every year that you're going to follow that policy. And then the handbooks were outdated. I want to say unions was from December 2014, if I'm remembering correctly. And so there were things not included, like the new fingerprinting requirements. So we added those pieces in. Uh, Juneteenth as a holiday, that's up for vote also tonight. Um, thinking that that would pass across the board, we did go ahead and add that for paid holidays for 12 month personnel. It would only be a paid holiday for anyone who's not 12 month if it fell on a school day. Um, and looking at the calendar, we're not usually going that far out. Um, so big changes here with vacation time, sick time and longevity. So Union 38 employees did not have the same benefits as Frontier employees in like positions. Uh, so one of the first things with the vacation time, actually any of the vacation sick, um, longevity, et cetera, Part-time was considered um, 30 hours a week was what you had to work in order to be eligible for benefits. We're requesting that Union 38 employees be allowed to receive vacation sick or other benefits if they work 20 hours a week or more. Uh, so we went ahead and made that change. And then looking at uh, the Union 38 and Frontier policies for the number of days you get, after one year of service, Union was only getting five, whereas Frontier was getting 10. Um, there was a three-year bump in there at Union, but we're going to replace that with the five-year bump at Frontier to 15 days and after 10 years, um, 20 days. So it's just, again, putting it more in alignment with Frontier and giving everyone a little bit more benefit up front. Um, one of the other things that we changed was that the superintendent can make um, – I skipped over C there. The superintendent can make decisions regarding giving someone credit time. So if we brought in a secretary new to Conway Grammar School and she had been a secretary in another like industry, we would honor that professional experience and allow that employee to come in with the one year of service. So 10 days of vacation up front. It's sort of a, a policy that Darius and I have been doing in the last two years. It hasn't come into play at Conway, but it has come into play at Frontier that you know, we want to hire qualified professionals and it's hard to hire anyone with no vacation time. So we just put that in writing here. Union could not roll over any of their vacation time. So if an employee had five days or 10 days left, they were losing it as of July 1st if they did not use it. Our recommendation is that we get in line with, with Frontier and these non-union employees can roll over five up to five days of vacation time into the new year. Um, so that's a big change right there under the vacation. Sick time. Uh, previously, part-time employees, again, they had to work 30 hours a week. We're changing it to 20 hours a week or more. And instead of five sick days, they're getting 10 sick days. Uh, they used to be able to accumulate only up to 45 days. We're now recommending 90. Uh, 12 month employees uh, can accumulate up to 120 days versus 60 days previously. 
And then Frontier has a change that we're actually looking into a little bit further because we did not vote this and we're looking for some more data that I'm going to give to that committee. We're actually looking at reducing Frontier's accumulation from 150 days down to 120. doesn't impact any of um, your employees right now, uh, but that would be a, a negative change for Frontier. Um, so basically, the, the rollover is built on and the accumulation of sick days is built in to give someone a disability policy, basically, in the event that they don't have a disability policy that they purchase voluntarily. So it's really protection of our employees who've worked for us long term. Um, longevity benefits. So there was only one longevity benefit in the union policy previously. It was $250 after 10 consecutive years of service. Again, we're asking that policy to be changed to match Frontier, which gives additional longevity at 15 and 20 years of $500 and $750, um, respectively. Retirement buyback. Uh, we are looking to have retirement change so that anyone hired as of July 1st has a cap of 45 days on the retirement sick buyback. That is similar language to the IA contracts, and we feel like it's a reasonable amount of time for an employee like this to be able to buy back. Um, right now, it is not capped, and we have had some payouts, not at Conway, but um, primarily central office that has resulted in $25,000 to $30,000 sick buybacks, um, which when you break that down over five schools, it's not a huge hit. But like we're talking about with changing the teacher contract, um, there doesn't seem to be an industry standard for this to be comparable with anymore, and that most places are capping um, or not even having a benefit like this at all for this employment group that's not in a union. Um, so that would be July 1, 21. So anyone who's currently employed would be grandfathered in. However, we are looking to change. Union 38 previously could get one and a half days of sick leave per year of service. Frontier is receiving two days, so we're asking to increase that to two days here. Uh, I think that covers it. I know I talked really fast. And again, you do not have to vote on this tonight. I know you did not have a lot of time to process it and read through. Um, the other three elementary schools have uh, voted this in already, but they were given the same opportunity to wait until September and then um, voted at that time. And if you do decide to do that, uh, the only impact I think is to the longevity benefit. So what we would do is issue the $250 payment and in September when you voted on it, if you approved it, um, then we would retroactively pay any difference to anyone that was owed with the new policy. Otherwise, none of the changes are really impactful this in the summer months, um, someone that's going to go, you know, from 30 to 20 hours, you might have a part time employee or two, Kristen, that although cafeteria wouldn't apply. So do you have one part time custodian that could be impacted by the change of 30 hours to 20 hours? So, you know, it. What I'm saying is I think we could get away with waiting until September if, if that felt more comfortable to you. We're not trying to rush you in any way, shape, or form to put this change in place. We recognize that it's a big change. Okay. The only other thing, remember you're talking about about five employees here, and two of them are part-time. Right, Kristen, if I do my math right? No, yeah. Talk to somebody else. So, but, so you're talking about, your, you know, you're talking about your head custodian, you're talking about your, um, um, front office secretary, and then cafeteria, and then two part-time custodian, part-time cafeteria. Yep. So, uh, you know, the, the, I, I don't know whether anybody else in any of the other committees has brought this to your attention, but like the the thing about the non-union, the, the non-union union 38 personnel is that that is the direct, uh, uh, oh, I don't know, equivalent to the every other town employee um and the the all the other town employees uh don't have any of this don't don't have longevity don't have sick pay buyback and um when we when we increase the longevity stuff that really gets their attention and not in a good way um so i mean you know <sighs> um you know, yeesh, yeesh. I don't. It's it, it's it's tough because these are the people that every day complain about you know not complain but make it very well known that um, they wish for higher compensation. Um, and uh, I don't know what to say when we pass things like this. 
So, Phil, I mean, it's a, I mean, this thing is loaded on a couple of levels. One, it's also loaded that we're acting, you guys are, these are individual town employees that you're overseeing and we're working, working as a region on that. Um, but at the same time, when you don't have these systems in place, you know, you're putting systems in place to take care of your employees. And so the towns are behind in personnel policies because they don't have an administration just like you have in the schools. And you know, we had a broke, I mean, we had this before, but again, you know, we have the, you know, the, the ability, Shelly, leading the charge here to, to correct these things. When I look at what town employees are paid versus school employees, and I move the town of Deerfield, they pay more the town employees on similar job thing. They will say it's a different job, but a principal secretary and a uh, secretary in the, in the, in the office of, of Deerfield, you know, is a different stress level, whatever, and to different be compensated, you know, $5 more at the same tier. I don't know, you know, but, you know, we have to create, we have to put, we have to provide for our employees within the confines of our budget. And if our employees are paid or have better packages than what the town's providing, then the town should have a, I know you wear a different hat, Phil, but the town, you know, the town should say, what is, what are, where are we lacking here? And maybe we should look at the schools doing, you know, um, you know, you have someone who's been working 15 years in the front office to give them other than just a coal increase, you give them a longevity benefit because they've been, you know, dedicated to the school. You know, I think that's you know, 250 bucks. I and mean, come on, you're not breaking anybody's budget. And if someone's, you know, raise an eyebrow to it, you say, you know, that person could leave and go get another job somewhere else and make more money. So I don't know. You hear what we're saying, but you know, we're packaging this together to take care of our employees. Um, you don't have to I mean, go, it's, it's, you go through it. You know, it sounds like quite a bit of equity stuff too to to match it with. Um, you know, what's been going on in the other district, you know, in Frontier, um, you know, sounds like we were way kind of out of whack. Well, I think so, you know, one could say with some of the Frontier things that there's more volume, you know what I mean? And, you know, the amount of paperwork has increased in, in you know, with people doing paperwork jobs. Um, I would also say that which Shelly kind of alluded to, but like what gives me the ability to grant him, if we hired somebody, if I had to hire a new secretary for Conway, do you think really I'm going to say you only get one week of vacation? Because according to our policy, you're on step one. You know, we're automatically going to say there's no way they're going to take it. We're going to automatically bump them down because we have an unrealistic policy handbook to what the job market is. And so, you know, it's a little bit different. I mean, the job market's different even for education right now. Teachers are, aren't, aren't sitting in one school their entire career like they used to um, until they find a good place that takes care of them. And so there's a lot more movement. We're seeing that along, along almost all aspects of the job. So um, so anyway, there's those kind of things that like, we're adjusting the frontier, but you're kind of adjusting them anyways in order to get good people in those situations. And the other side is like you look in the Conways, the three full-time people, I mean, they've been there forever, all three of them. I mean, I don't say names because that wouldn't be right, but you know, it's not about, and that's how Frontier was. Like, they were building positions to individual right. people. We know who they are, yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. And so, I don't know, this kind of gives a, and there's some protection also when you say you're treating everybody equally in that, you know, when you have singleton positions in a school, you have something you can back yourself onto. So. Again, but if you are uncomfortable, we really do. You're not talking about this is not going to affect us if we hold the vote and you can kind of think it over and read through it and that kind of stuff. The the other is this the, in general, you know, that the, the, they're trying to get you to, to stop doing compensation in ways that are not reflected in the annual budget so it, or in the line item annual budget and, and, in, and, and in negotiations. So and so that once you once you establish the longevity stuff. Um, it never, it's never, ever, ever going away. Um, and, um, and, and like if, if we're ever in a financial crunch, like last year, again, there's nothing that we can do about it. Like it, w w last year, Conway, all, all town resident, all, all town employees, except for the school employees had to do a wage freeze. Um, and, <clears throat> and, and if that, if the longevity stuff was in there, um, we wouldn't have been able to claw that back and we, you know, wh whatever it, it ended up, we didn't need to do the wage freeze. And we, we did a, we, we reimbursed them all for that this year at town meeting. Good. Um, but, but, but you know, these are the thing once you're just, we just, when we just make the baseline higher and higher, there's nothing that we can do about that in, in a crisis. 
And and I, you know, we should be planning for uh, more flexibility in the event of a crisis, which will be coming sooner or later. I mean, they just that's that's been the history of the funding of schools. Sooner or later, we're going to be hurting, just like all of our neighbors are have been. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't but, think that should impact the five employees we're talking about. But that we have to prepare and wait for some disaster that might the, be happening in the future. No, but the, the 24 town employees, the, you know, other town employees um, that would all be eligible for it right now, that's a big impact for our Well, they town. can go get a job at a school. We don't I want mean, that to happen. It, well, then the town has to get on board with improving things like the school has. So right. I, mean, I hear what you're saying, Phil. I hear you're saying, but it's part of your, you know, we could we could alter another way to get them more money is we could pay them on higher scales, right? And that's the other way I, of doing it, you know, that kind of stuff. But you do get stuck because they're non-union and they're not really big enough to be a union. Um, because you get stuck, if you get hired in, you get stuck at that two percent moving forward. You never have an adjustment. We we talk about that. We talk about that with, you know, unfortunately with administrator salary. That's why you see administrators bounce around because you get locked in and then they, the market goes up. You know, I, I don't know. It's it's part of their compensation package. And you, you're, your lanes rate, it's not a lot when you're talking about. You're talking about, of the, we have some veteran people, you're talking about what, $1,500? So, you know, um, you, you don't, you'll cut that from the budget. Well, if you've got a budget woes, it's the least of your problems. Um, you know, you're going to end up having cut much larger than that. I may hear what you're saying. In the towns, in the schools, should work tighter on this. Agreed. But it's a, uh, it's a. Uh, they're not, they're not looking to work. You know what I mean? Like we can talk it, but there's too many, too many cooks in the kitchen, on that. In the sense of that, you know, you know, school committee have to work with select boards. We have to work with finance committees. We have to work with, you know, personnel committees to figure out. And then you got to do that over four towns. You know. We should just rejoin. Yeah. <laughs> so, Phil, are you? Do you want to wait on this, or do you want to vote, or what? Where are you? You just want to? Because well, all three of us would probably need to vote the same for this to. Yeah, if it's okay, I'm going to wait on this, and I just wanted to uh, crunch some numbers to see what it would be like for the town uh, if the town followed along. So you want to postpone a vote till September? Sure, if that's all right. That's okay with me as long as if any changes any changes are made, the people would get compensated retroactively. But Shelly let us know they would. Yeah. Absolutely. But, yeah, and Phil, okay. just send us some emails if you get any ideas or any kind of changes so we can we can prep up the document first because um Right. Yep. All right. Thanks. All righty. On to Juneteenth. You're going to fill us in on that, Darius? Yep. Uh, Juneteenth holiday. Um, basically, what we're looking for, I'm going to share my screen just because I have it. I know it's just so I can talk to it. Um, we're looking for um, all 12 month employees be eligible for paid holiday to have Juneteenth in 2022 so next year we're looking at um and you know basically i just put language in there if it falls on a saturday it'd be on a friday if it falls on a sunday it'd be on a monday um i added this because people did talk about this at one of the school committee meetings like what if the last day of school is the 19th do we really have to push to the following week or something of that sort um and we kind of we, we we spun around on that a little bit. And it's like, you know what, if you're gonna have a holiday to recognize something, to then move the holiday around the convenience of the school schedule doesn't make much sense. It doesn't work. This holiday doesn't work well with school schedules, but it doesn't mean we should be trying to move what national holiday or uh, state holiday right now is um so forth. So we, they kind of pushed away from that, but and then we just need to look at that when we make calendars. Um all unit employees, unit C, unit A doesn't get paid holidays. Um, this will be, we do go into collective bargaining next year and we can bring that to them as an offering um, as part of a package um, that we want to do. But um, 
next year, 2022, with their five snow days, the last day is the 16th. So we even then have room that next year will not be impacted by um, non-12 month year employees as well. So we have some time to, to figure this out. Did I miss anything there, Shelley? Right now, it's the state, it is a state-driven holiday. So you're not looking, it's not gonna cost more money because you're just paying people not to work that day. So they're not on a salary of number of days. Um, 10 month year employees would actually um, cost the district money. But the 12 month is a non is a non uh, financial impact the way the schools are set up. Financial in sense of productivity loss because you lose a day of work, but not so really look at it. Someone's going someone's at home going, it is a loss because of what you're right, you lose productivity, but you don't lose, there's no out of budget, there's no budget, direct budget. So, so uh, about this, so, I, so the, the, it's it's still a subject to collective bargaining with the, with the unions because whether or not to add another holiday or, or take what, whatever. But but I saw in the in your handbook proposal, you just sort of we just sort of added it and uh, added another holiday. You got to remember those non-union employees, right? So we would be adding it to. The people are working 12 months a year. So your custodial staff and your secretaries and stuff, this is what we're voting on, is that group. Right. And, and three towns already voted it affirmatively. Well, but 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 the teachers are going to say, yeah, you did this for the custodians. What, why aren't you going to do this for us? I think it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard not to, we, not to, not to show any cards, but it's going to be hard not to close school for the end of slavery and then not pay those people who to get other paid holidays and not pay them there. But it is part of the financial package and for us to do it outside of that collective bargaining doesn't make sense. I think it's one of the things that we're going to be pushing to give. Um, they'll probably easily accept, but it's going to be, I think it's, you know, we've been, we've been advised, you know, again, it's kind of oversharing in the public space, but you know, it's, not, it's going to be a difficult thing to collective bargain. And say you're not getting this group's not going to get it and this group is but it is part of financial package and it doesn't impact this year so we can save it for the negotiations of next year and it doesn't affect next year's calendar as well so we actually have another year unless we have a horrendous snow snowfall we lose eight days of school you know that's the only way um and they make us make them all up the way they do it, it'd be a it'd be tough to get there <clears throat> all right can I have a motion on this? I'll make a motion to, uh, to second the uh, proposal for June. I'll second it. All in favor, uh, Michael? Yes. Bill? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And myself. So we have passed the Juneteenth holiday. All righty. Uh, I do not have a report. Denise is not here for the collaborative report. Kristen, you want to give us your principal's report, which I read today, which was very upbeat and optimistic as always. Yeah, just real quickly. Um, so I did want to let people know that Jared Campbell is uh, definitely interested in the position, um, the school committee position. So this Jerry, so you can tell. So he should write a letter. He can send it to me and I'll forward it to the select board have their own email addresses, Bill? Because he write, needs to write a letter to the select board that he's interested in, in being appointed to the vacant spot in school committee. Select like board at Town of Conway. Okay, right. great. Um, and just that we ended the year um, with a lot of emotion more than we've seen, you know, being in our, in our clusters and our cohorts. Um, hiring is done. We had quite a bit of hiring to do um, with several retirees. Um, and we have some productive summer plans. Uh, great sixth grade graduation. Uh, Mr. Gifford was able to attend, which was nice for the students to see him, um, as well as Jamie Jackman and Brenna Bean, who took over sixth grade. So really short report, great end of the year. Um, we're going to be busy this summer and then ready for the fall when it so I was already looking at the calendar, setting up meetings, and I was like, oh, wow, after the end of June, it's, it just flies right by. But 
yeah, great and great town meeting. So thank you everyone for your support. Yeah, it was a, a year I think we will never forget for sure. Although we hope to. Nice comment. <laughs> Very appropriate. <laughs> uh, I just want to mention our retirees. Um, Paulette Lovechuck, uh, who is our reading specialist, um, was going to be, you know, very missed. And Absolutely. Arlene, yeah, Arlene Mikulajczyk, who is our phys ed, physical education, yeah, I can't talk tonight, phys ed teacher, always, the two of them just came to school every day with a bounce um, and such energy. And Shafia Finger, our school psychologist, also um, had to do um, a quick decision, and her, she left a couple of weeks ago and went into retirement. Take the food while it's warm. Oh, sorry. Um, so those are our retirees for this year. Well, Mary' Rick, decision is moving into the reading. Wait, Rick, Wait. Rick Gifford doesn't. Yeah. Rick Gifford until next year or what? Um. Right. So I'm I'm going to be meeting with him tomorrow, so I can inform you of I, I can send you an email after tomorrow i heard he did come to graduation that was very he did come yeah people, so that's awesome he came to the sixth grade picnic surprised them i wish i had a i wish i had videotaped the kids just running toward him it was just the best and then he was able to come to graduation that's Looking awesome tired but I, really great. i heard it was amazing awesome all righty anything else yeah um just it's you know we did appointments but we, and you talked about a substitute for you know a, a a person to put in for the conway grammar school but i do want to bring up just at you know ashley is the frontier rep and she's been the frontier rep for two years um and i really enjoy ashley's company however i have not been able to enjoy ashley's company very often at all um so I, and I, 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 you know, if she's not going to go to those meetings, we need to appoint somebody that does that want that will. But um, she's no longer on the committee. No, front the frontier. Uh, she's she uh, she's the elected frontier rep with a three year term, and she's still in the middle of it. Oh, okay. And she had you know maybe been to two meetings the her entire time. I don't know. Maybe one. Maybe one more than that. But um, okay, so she's the Conway elect. So Phil is the Conway school committee rep. representative. She is the town elect frontier representative. So, so does the town or the school deal with that? Um, again, so the, the appointments are made by the select board, but they're really great if they're forwarded by the school committee. Phil, can I ask a point of order question on that? Because sure. Technically, she's on two separate boards the way she's elected. So you technically could have somebody different at Frontier than is the fifth member of the Conway Elementary School, is my understanding. Yeah, I, I would think so. I mean, that's how other towns are. Right. You know, so like, you know, let's go to Waitley. You have Bill Smith is the town elect and Bob Halla is the is the appointment from the from the committee. In fact, that's how the other towns are. So and it's how we were. That's how we were. That, that, that um, she 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 took over the spot that um, Cindy Wimet had for all those years. Correct. And then she also was on the elementary, so she was on two. She's on two committees, so to speak. So, so the select board is actually looking for two roles, and if someone wants to fit both of them, and so that's an important thing to make sure that Jared, if Jared's in, Jared Campbell, there you said is well, actually, doing it. That's the case. We can't. Uh, Ashley was elected to that job. Correct, but it was not filled this year. No, ours wasn't. But Frontier, she's an elected member by the you town to Frontier. And she's she her Frontier does not expire till next year. I just my mine says twenty two so on it. Can, so we she can't is. Do anything about that? The select board could, but we cannot. Correct. That's what I was trying to clarify: is whose job would it? To be do to do that. And I should look, know look like it's on you, Phil. <laughs> Back to you, Phil. She would have to like she would have to like submit a letter, right? If she didn't or just if she wanted to step down. 
Well, she can verbal. resign if she doesn't have time or whatever's going on, but somebody's got to talk to her about it. Phil. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. I will. Okay. All righty. Update us. All right. Yep. Well, I'll take a motion to adjourn then. Have a great summer, everybody. Thank you for working so hard to get everybody through this year. And uh, somehow we did it. Crazy. We crazy, did crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah. Amazing. We did uh, it really Yeah. Anyway. All right. Motion to adjourn. Larry, Shelly, Kristen, thank you so much. It's Yes. Yeah, we couldn't have made it through without you. Oh my goodness, yeah. what a year! Yeah, year of the trial by fire. <laughs>